Are you ready to war? Hey guys, I'm Angela and welcome back to Hobby Night. This week, Games Workshop previewed a whole bunch of new miniatures in their online Twitch stream for the Faith and Damnation, which I watched and oh boy, there are some really good new figures in there that I'm very hyped about. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this week's Warhammer news. All right, we're gonna start with Age of Sigmar and the Soul Blight Grave Lords because, oh my God, Games Workshop is really, 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 really trying to get me to play Age of Sigmar, and I think, I think they might have finally done it. Between Curse City and everything that they previewed for the Soul Blight Grave Lords, I am so excited. Let's let's start with like the least exciting thing that they showed us, which was the um, zombies. Um, they gave us some more zombies, which is really cool. Um, they definitely fit with the Curse City stuff. So I imagine all of those data points and everything or the data sheets that we're getting for those um, miniatures in that box that are going to be their Age of Sigmar, you know, equivalent and everything. I assume that everybody in there is going to go into this faction um, or at least like Potentially. It's, I'm very, very excited. The, the zombies are very cool, but they're very similar to what we've seen in Cursed City, so they're, it's just a nice add-on to just basically adding more flavor to them. Now, let's talk about those adorable Felbats. I love their faces. I'm so excited for their wings, because I just think like the whole thing is going to be so much fun to paint, especially in contrast, because I mean, it's all fur and flesh and organics, which contrast paint works really, really well for. So like the bats look really cool. They're gonna go with the bats again that you get in, in Curse City, I think very well, it'll blend very nicely. So super hyped for that. And like I said, they're just very, very cute. Bats are one of those creatures that I really, really like, and I'm glad to see them in the game and getting more like beastie creatures and everything. So that's very cool. Now, now let's go ahead and talk about actually before we actually talk about my favorite thing because i just looked at my notes and i was like oh right they're skeletons let's talk about the death rattle skeleton boys because i think we've actually seen them before but it's really cool that they're coming back in they're going to pair with the white king which they showed in the little preview as well um, but again we've seen them they look awesome now the thing that i do find interesting that was mentioned in the stream but it wasn't specifically like in the video package and everything that they showed us is the skeletons are gonna be a multi-part kit that will have an option for spears, which is great. So we, they, cause they showed a lot of, I think the hand weapons and everything for the preview, but they're gonna have a spear option. I wanna see archers at some point. Give me some skeletal archers, please. Now, okay, we've gotten past all of that stuff. Let's talk about my favorite part and what makes me want this faction so gosh darn much. The Blood Knights, they are amazing. They are so old world. The I just want to applaud the GW art um, painting team and everything. The the Golden Demon. Actually, I don't know if it's the Golden Demon team that does it. Um, but whoever did it in GW, whoever painted those models. Heavy metal. Heavy metal. That's what it is. Heavy metal. Heavy metal. My apologies. They're orcs. Oh oh wow, they're really good for orcs. That like been I just for a long time. You know what? I applaud them. They did an amazing job because the color palette on the on the Blood Knights, freaking it, they nailed it. It made me want them even more like that bright red armor. I can't wait to like put some Blood Angels red on there, do some highlights with like orange and everything, maybe do a little highlight of yellow. Like I just, uh, it looks so good. I can't wait for it. And then there's that banner, like the banner that that guy has. Oh my God, it's so gorgeous. I love when they give us sculpted banners. Um, I was actually looking through an apocalypse box for guard recently and I found a bunch of sculpted banners and I was really excited because I love painting those kinds of things up. So just like everything about this set, everything that they revealed for the Blight Lord, or not the Blight Lords, um, the Soul Blight, 
God, there's so many words that they just interchange, isn't there? Um, everything about this vampire faction, I freaking love. I wanted basically aristocratic vampires back and that's what we're getting. And so I'm just, I'm so happy. Let me know what you guys think down below. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Well, while you're here, don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. Next up, we got a look at the next box set for Dire Chas or Warhammer Underworld's Dire Chasm, and it's Osiarch Bone Reapers, which is very cool. Now, I really, really, really like Kanan, which is the name of the gentleman in, because it's called Kanan's Reapers. Um, I really like Kanan. His figure, amazing. Like, what an awesome, like, just boss character for D&D, &D, or just to actually have, you know, more lords and actual characters. I don't know if they're called lords, so ignore that portion. But like more like HQ characters for the OCR Bone Reapers, because that faction's actually relatively new. And since their release, I don't actually think they've gotten that much since then. So this is a really nice addition and gives them some actual characters. The other thing that really excites me, because I don't, I don't remember if there's already a box out for this, but I like the archer guy. Um, that they show, the one guy with the bow. Um, I feel like we don't see a lot of ranged weaponry anymore that isn't um, guns in Fantasy or Age of Sigmar. Um, very often, like they've really moved away from traditional bows and like that kind of stuff. And I, I personally really like that. Um, so I really like seeing when these figures come in and they have these items and everything. Everybody else in this set is interesting, but honestly, a little dull to me. Like. The OCR Bone Reapers are a little weird because you can only do so much with them because they're undead. So they're supposed to be a little shambly and they've definitely captured that with some of the like weight to their motion. Like some of them are like mid walking and they have this like gait of things are not exactly functioning fully. But the OCR Bone Reapers have this like heavy armor plating around them that makes them super, super chonky. And because their legs end up getting so like close together and stuff sometimes i don't know it looks really weird to me and i just don't feel like there's quite as much dynamism in these like sculpts as we've seen in some of the other underworld sculpts maybe i'll have a different opinion once i see like a better turnaround or something although i will say the halberd guy he's really cool i really like also that kind of weaponry in there it's a nice mix which is neat and it might be really good for kit bashing and just having a good like D D like band or everything. And then there's Kanan, our big boy. His crown is amazing. I love the flesh cape around him. In him, because he's a larger figure, that like, that bulkiness that I was talking about, it works a little better because there's a little bit more height to him. He can move and you can actually see that momentum a bit more. And I just like, I'm still gonna pick up this box set. I mean, because it's worth it just to get Kanan. Oh no, no, I'm absolutely getting this set for Kanan specifically, because he's just so cool looking. But everything else in it, like with the exception of the Halberd and the Archer guy, I'm just not as impressed. I was buried in the mountain, trapped under the rock. I have escaped my prison, but my people Oh God. Let's talk now about the potential new beast god of the east, Kragnos. This is a brand new character that is going to be part of the Broken Realms series that we know basically nothing about other than the brief um, imagery that they showed us in this preview. And I have some theories that I just wanted to talk about a little bit because like, Seriously, he kind of looks a little, I mean, he's obviously a centaur. He's got, you know, a, a horse body and everything. The horns that he has feels very almost wood elf-ish to me because they kind of look like like actual wood, um, like they might be bark or something like that. Um, and that dead tree next to him also, I don't know if that's just like 
imagery or whatever, or if it's actually meant to be sort of a symbol of, you know, Earth has died. He was trapped because he says that in the trailer, he was under rock and everything. Maybe his forest got destroyed. I have no idea. The imagery in it also, like his, his shield specifically, has a lot of like round ornamentation on it, which also makes me think slightly ogre-esque. And now I don't actually know if he is part of the ogre faction or anything like that. Um, but he might be from like that Eastern region. Now I know Age of Sigmar doesn't like one-to-one -one with the old world, but ogres in the old world were from that area. And I'm wondering if like, he's maybe a god from that region that has been, you know, transferred into Age of Sigmar and now he's here, or he may just be a brand new god for this world. Who knows? I mean, it would be kind of cool for them to do that because they keep, they just keep reusing everybody from old world, despite the fact that it's supposed to be like separate and changed and different and everything. So I would love for this to be a completely separate thing, not tied to anything from there. But who knows? Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. Um, if you've read any of the Broken Realm stuff, maybe they've been talking about this guy. Let me know and tell me all about it. All right, so we've wrapped up Age of Sigmar. We've seen a bunch of really cool miniatures there. And now we're gonna move into 40K and start with Necromunda because we have a new box set coming out for the House of Faith, part of the Kaudor faction, which I am, or Kaudor, I'm sorry, I might probably mispronounce that, I apologize. But these guys are really cool, actually. I, I'm one of those people that really likes the zealous nature of the, just relig religious fever that, um, or fervor, I guess, that 40K can sometimes lean into with the faith in the emperor and like the humans just being like bonkers, crazy, obsessed with like- By the four chaos gods, Nurgleth, Zeech, Slanesh, and Korn, what do you mean, woman? I mean that I really like these guys because I really, really like just the insane, like zealousness of their characters. They captured it beautifully in the sculpts. Like the flame head is my favorite. Like he just is absolutely amazing. Um, I just, I want to paint it so badly. But I also actually really, really like the old man with the beard. Um, I love what they did for the um, like burn representation because these guys have gone like totally off the rock, like off the rocks. Like they're just, I'm gonna, I'm, <laughs> I just, I think they're so cool. And I haven't even talked about the anime guy. I love <laughs> his hair. Like every single one of these figures, I think there's only one where the head I'm like, eh. The goddamn shonen protagonist. He, he is, he is. He's a, he, he looks kind of like Sora. If Sora just went like <laughs> batshit, really got into flames flavor. and just was like, I'm gonna burn everything. <laughs> And I just, I really dig them. I okay, want to- wait, 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 I now want him, I want to see Sora with like a flamethrower keyblade. Yes. Oh my, well, there's the guy with a chainsaw, like looking, yes. oh my God, we can turn it into, I'm doing this. I might not actually wait, do this, what? but I really want to convert one of them into a, um, cause I can put that head probably on somebody else. Maybe we'll have to check. I, I'm interested in this kit. Um, I really, really think it's very cool, but that's actually not the only thing that came out for Necromunda as a preview. They have a brand new starter set coming out, which has me incredibly excited. I hope it's cheaper. I hope it's cheaper. It seems like it is because it physically looks smaller than the other ones. And that was honestly my biggest issue with Necromunda when it first relaunched and everything, because I know it's been around for a while, but when like the new edition came out, the thing that held me back from it the most, because I love the miniatures, I love seeing the alternate Imperium stuff that they do because this is GW allowing their sculptors to play, do other things, and really have some fun. It's indoor. It's, it's all indoor. Like there's a lot of really unique things about it and I, I like it, but I never, I didn't know how to start because like the initial starter set for it was like $300 or something like that. The one with terrain and everything. I mean, yes. I know that it came with a bunch of extra stuff like the terrain and everything to and get they started. they sold out very quickly. They really did. 
Um, but it was just like, how do you, where do you even begin? Like, I don't know, it just, it felt really overwhelming to me. And so this new, what seems like smaller box set has me really excited because it means that maybe I can actually like get into it and not feel as overwhelmed, not feel like I need to like paint all of this terrain to be able to play and just move on and actually play the game and then start actually collecting some of these miniatures that I keep gushing over and really wanting, but not actually feeling like I can justify purchasing because I have nothing else I would use them in. If I was actually playing the game, I might actually feel like I can justify buying some of them and then painting them. And I really kind of want to do that. So GW, do me proud, make this box set a little bit cheaper. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. Angela, you own like four war bands. What are you talking about? Oh my God, I do. I mean, I keep, I do buy them, but I haven't had a reason to paint them. So like, give me a reason to paint them. Right boys, listen up. In the beginning, Gork and Mork needed some fighty lads. So they did some stuff and their orcs appeared. Some of them were rats. But there was lots of boys too. Some of them were big, and some of them were weird. But they was all mean and green. Except the red ones. And the biggest and greenest get around is the big boss. And we's gotta to listen to him, cause he's taking us on the great war. That's where all the best fighting is. We's gonna use all the shiny new trucks and shooters to crump the you war. We don't need that junk. Shut up, you git. <laughs> As I was saying, the other lads have their shinies and their know-whats, but they don't know how to use them proper. Not like us. We's got our stickers in our squeaks. We's gonna drag them down and crump them good with hands and teeth and all that fancy truck gubbins. That's why we're the biggest and we're the strongest in any clan we're in. Are you ready to war? Because I am in the Beast Snaggers looks super cool. I loved this preview. We only got to look at one miniature, which was a like squig shark thingamadoodle um, that kind of had Horizon Zero Dawn vibes because of the way that they painted the armor, like all that white, like really, really bright white armor on it just really screamed Horizon Zero Dawn and they're savage orcs. So we just, it kind of fits and I really, really like it. I have never in my life been more interested in the running an orcs list than with this like announcement because I just I think it's a really cool new direction and I'm very interested what this means for like does this mean we're going to be getting an orc codex right after the admech one potentially because I can't imagine they're going to want to release that miniature and not have it with a new codex so that it has you know rules and everything so that's exciting if we're going to get orcs soon plus I'm excited to see what all the other models that they kind of hinted at in that you know render and everything that they did leading up to the preview of the miniature because the the leader guy looks amazing. I want to know specifically what that like red squig looking thing with the gun coming off of it is. Like, is that just a living creature mounted onto his shoulder that shoots for him? I don't know. I'm interested in it though. I like the sled looking thing that's being pulled by one of these new squig styles. I don't know if this is actually like a, a known sculpt or anything for them because I don't know that much about like orc lore or the beasts that go with them very much but I like the look of the sled um it really feels like they're bringing the savage orcs from Age of Sigmar kind of into Warhammer 40k which I'm, I assume actually means that they're probably going to be leaving the standard orc boys alone for right now and focusing on building up this new faction within the orcs before they release any other new content or anything for it, other than like the codex or something. But it's really, really cool. I think it's going to be awesome. Like I just, like I said, I really wanna know what the rest of this line is gonna look like because that first miniature really has me excited. I also like that there's both an orc and a grot on there. Um, that's just a fun little add on and everything, but oh, it looks so cool. Fighting crude. Work to do, no time for crawling in the dirt. 
Hypothesis. Is Katari fit to fight? Perhaps to lead? Modifications needed. Needs arms to direct troops. Four? No arms valuable. Data suggests fondness for blunt objects. Analysis. Illogical but efficient. Thunderhammer. Weight exceeded. Control steady, perhaps? Yes. Design parameters acceptable. Upload command data and commence field testing. I believe we now know what our next codex might be after the Drukhari, and it looks like it's going to be Admech, which I'm actually very excited for. It's nice to see a Imperium but non-Space Marine. I like that. We also got a look at a new model for the Skit or for uh, well, it's a Skatari model, um, but for the Admech, and it is a Skatari Marshal. And we've seen the silhouette for this guy for a little while. It's pretty cool, but like, honestly, he's a Necron. He's a Necron. He's an emo Necron. He is because he does kind of look like he's crying. If you actually look at at the the figure and everything, he has this little like dip in his armor that's beneath his one eye that's exposed, and they decided to paint it a little bit blue, and so it does kind of look like he's crying. In now I prison on Mars. That means you killed a guy. Oh, I mean that's not surprising. It's Mars 40k and you're in prison, I assume death happens all the time. Oh, I mean, yeah, it so happens- It really just makes him extra. It really does. Yeah. He's very extra. I, I, I don't actually know if I like it. I, I am not, I have some issues with the Admech and it has nothing to do with like anything actually logical. It is simply that- Which is ironic. I know, it's very funny, but like, okay, hear me out. Everything that GW has been doing so far in ninth edition and moving the Imperium towards a like, much cleaner, a little bit less ornate, and just sleek design. Like you look at modern Primaris and everything, they're super clean. They do all the edge highlighting and all of them to even emphasize those hard edges further. I, I love I love the Skitari and I like what the Admech does, but they just screams chaos to me, oddly enough, because of all of the like bits and bobs and everything like that. And I just it's texture difference. It's because I mean, it's not the it really has just been getting streamlined. The sisters of that. Yeah, I was actually. Gonna... The sisters are very ornate. They are, but it's clean in like. That's just modern sculpting, I think. It it is, and it doesn't. I don't know if it works on the Admech because I feel like they're trying to do it here, and I just don't know if it works. I don't know. I just I don't know if I like this model. I'm very hung up on it's very it. Cybermen from Doctor Who. He man. looks a little bit kind of like a man of iron with a bit more stuff on him and that i'm just like going this feels slightly her like heretical now i do i want to say i do want to call out i do actually like the narrative for the preview leading up to the reveal of the miniature because i assume that's a tech priest going like man i really don't want to actually lead my troops let me make a skatari that can do it for me and that's how we get this model. Now, if it, this is and if this is like filling a role for the Admech units that has been lacking, I'm super excited for that. It's just that the figure itself, like the sculpt, I'm just not super impressed with it. Who's excited about the gunnery of nunnery? Because I am. Somebody said that in the comments while we were watching the stream and they called it out and it was like the best thing I'd heard. It's amazing. Let's talk about the glorious new tank that the Sisters of Battle are getting because it looks like a love child between a Predator and a Lehman Russ and I am super excited, but also very confused as to why you can't put heavy flamers on it because it's something that they talked about in the preview. You can't actually put heavy flamers on it, which I understand on one hand, because like w the sisters already have a lot of flame weapons. It's thematic for them and everything. So it makes sense that they might, ugh, let me say that again. Sorry, I went too fast. It makes sense that they might, you know, exclude it from some things, just to add a little bit of variety, give a little bit more flavor and everything. But like their sisters of battle, 
they just should have flamers on everything. I don't know, it seems weird to me, but I really, really like the look of the tank. It does, however, make me a little bit concerned for the Astra Militarum because I look at it and I'm like, okay, legit. It kind of looks like it's a Predator mixed with a Lehman Russ. It has a battle cannon on it. It comes with three heavy bolters. It also kind of looks like there might be like a missile on the backside of it or it's something. It's a hunter killer missile. Oh, okay, cool. Hunter killer missile. So it's also got that. Um, again, this name is kind of weird. Um, I love it. I just want to know what this actually means for like the tanks for the, for the guard because it is a Lehman Russ it, in weaponry. Yeah, it feels like I'm, I've been painting a Lehman Russ for Monday's video, spoiler, and it feels like just a sister version of the Lehman Russ. And I'm very, very cool with that. But I also want to know what you're gonna, what GW is gonna end up doing for the Astra Militarum to make them like unique and interesting because I feel like they're, they don't really have a lot that makes them unique or interesting anymore because like either all of their war gear and stuff is spread out between sisters, space marines, all of that, admech and all that. Um, their tanks are now being kind of used, like the silhouette of them is seems like it's being used in other places. Same firepower. Same firepower, but they're actually, I think, better because it's a sister tank, which means that they'll hit on threes probably instead of fours like the Lehman Russ, right? So I don't know, like I have some questions. I'm very, very hyped for this sister of battle stuff because I love that army. The aesthetics are great. I'm excited for when that um, Terminator looking piece comes out as well, which again, speaking of, um, I assume maybe we'll also be getting the sisters codex soon because they've shown brand new miniatures which need rules and everything and they don't like to put out codexes or new miniatures without the new codexes. So maybe we're gonna be getting orc and sisters at the same time. That would be awesome. Maybe they'll do a box set. That would be cool. Um, that would actually be a really cool box set. $200. It would be $200, but it would be rad because like you'd get so much neat stuff in it, especially if they put all the new feral orcs. I'm just oh, hyper, like imagine, imagine it'd be glorious. Um, they're not actually gonna do that. Don't get your hopes up. I'm just speculating and dreaming um, and hoping that if the, for stuff that will never come. Um, but like, yeah, I just, I have concerns for the Astra Militarum. I'm very excited for the sister stuff. The tank looks amazing. I certainly want to pick one or two of them up. I probably will because I can't help myself, but let me know what you guys think of it because they've been like, I think giving us little tidbits of this for a while. Let me know. Are you disappointed? Are you excited? Tell me all about it. All right, that has been this week's Warhammer news. I hope you guys have enjoyed my coverage of the Faith and Damnation preview that we got this weekend. I certainly enjoyed it. It wasn't as exciting as some of like the earlier previews that they had. Actually, no, that's not true. They had a lot of vampire stuff and that has me really hyped and the sister stuff was cool. You got cool. spoiled by Dark City. I really did. I got very spoiled by that Dark City preview and I have been judging everything else since past it or um, against it and just like, it, it's still good though. Like this was a great preview. I'm very excited for a lot of the stuff that's coming out. There's so much hype in my heart. And it, I hope you guys are excited too, because next Monday, well, this coming Monday, actually, as I mentioned, tomorrow, tom tomorrow. yes, because I always put these out on Sunday. I don't know why I say next Monday as if it's not the next day. Tomorrow, I will be painting a Lehman Rust for you guys. I'm very, very, very pleased with how it came out. It's my first like it's one of my, like my only my second tank that I've painted. That's like a big tank. So I'm very happy with it. I hope you guys are going to enjoy seeing that. And I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this episode of the news. I have been Angela. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.